Alright, hey, hi, hello. How's it going, guys? My name is Adrian Zod, and welcome back to more of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Now, before I begin, be sure to like, subscribe, and get that bell on so you stay up to date on all my latest videos. So, last we left off, we were kind of trying to figure out, like, what, what actually was going on. We, I mean, I originally thought that they, that sh uh, it was because of the fight with the landlord and the landlady that she threw a knife outside, it hit, uh, the, the lady in the back and that's what happened but as we go along we find out that you know because it's like a top class window or something like that it wouldn't have gone all the way across the street it would have just plopped down so now the argument is that um, she was actually below uh, below the next to the house where the fight was happening and the, it's the cop that actually moved the, the lady up um, across the street so it will be not on his beat so he wouldn't have to deal with it because he wants to have an anniversary dinner with his wife. So that's kind of where we left off. He kind of admitted to it already. Um, but yeah, let's continue. But God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bust for Pat. Oh no, Roly, that was all my fault. Uh, he did a bad thing, lady. She never dropped in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Roly. You almost... Are you kidding me? Like... Like, your actions could have caused the man to go to jail forever. And can you tell us, Constable, how many books did she move from the from the one side of the road to the other in total? Hmm? Oh, um, four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely. Four. Three of them dropped my Miss Natsume. And the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garrett household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir. That's because... That's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? She picked it up. She picked up the book. Come on. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt, no doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Fourth book's information has been updated. Uh, it was in hand, Mrs. B ran away, okay. I'm not sure how that's important, she could have just picked it up. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There were only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd, who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all over the road would make a jot of difference. I I suppose this is for this is it for me now. I've had it. Fire him. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zeeks. I believe that concludes the cross examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes sir. Um Mr Prosecutor sir what will become my Roly? What will happen to him? Uh, ooh, what are you gonna do? For now, you are free to go home. The police will con contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. Alright then. Oh boy. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson in your mind. Ooh, you embarrassed! You know you're wrong! And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of crime. Ah, n never again, sir. You, you mean to say... Leave now. This trial's not yet over. Uh, um. So, he's getting away with it? Come on. You nearly got a man in prison. Well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene for crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here, principally. That the accused, Mrs. Suzuki Natsume, is the only person who could possibly have committed this crime. 
No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there are there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife and the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. No advance, is this true? Very well. Name the person if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You will name this other person who could have perpetrated the crime. Oh god. It's Joan, isn't it? Knife! She threw the knife. The defense would once again like to request a cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joan Gerrida. Me? me? Oh dear! I mean... You throw the knife. That request has already been denied. But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garrida, answer me this. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garrida. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband, when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open top hinge casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Gerardo. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Oh, you busted! I meant the truth. I think she's gonna lie though. I don't recall it. See? She's gonna lie, seriously. Call John. Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there and all that recall, yes, and members of the jury didn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Call John. No, I have no recollection of seeing that at all. Juror number four. Oh, shit. Oh? Oh! Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's just a common old garden knife. It could have come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Joking? What are you saying, please, Mrs. Garadab? Now you listen to me. Oh, I, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. You throw shit at your husband, though. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to hear you. hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. You're going to have to prove to me that I truly have life if that's what you think. Oh boy, come along now. Chop, chop. Do your worst. I, I looked at the knife though, I, did, I didn't really see anything. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, the, the, the tip is blunted off, but that's it. Other, otherwise there's no indication it belongs to anybody. Um, well... Well, Miss Nadeho, though, if, if I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Then take the stand, juror. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Van Zeet. I... I'm going to have to testify? Juror number four, as I'm sure you'll appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today, this testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me. 
in the first place, you shouldn't have been on 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 the panel. Like, come on, judge, do your job. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Gardiner. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly, my lord. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. That's right, lady. Come here. This is such a strange feeling. First time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here, in the old Bailey. I'm a lawyer. Good for you, buddy. Even though you don't have any qualifications. Oh wow, she's still holding a teapot. <laughs> Priorities: T. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my, my name is John Gerida, and I'm um. Well, I'm a juror, and such like. Sounds like even she doesn't know if she's a housewife or a maid or what anymore. The court has decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. Do you understand, madam? Uh, yes, my lord. You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, she's shaking. Poor girl. I feel bad for her. Oh, oh dear me. Shut up, Joni. Oh, nothing to worry about now. It's the husband. Oh. I didn't know you were here, John. Oh, he's here to support her. Wasn't, wasn't only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? But, but what about your knee, dear? Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. Oh, John. How cute. I presume you are Mr. John Garadam? <sighs> Sir, former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Northumberland, Northumberland Facilier, Sir. See my fair share of action and now living the quiet life as a were. The quiet life? Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse in the day in question? <laughs> ah, well, yes. <laughs> Quite. I believe this may represent the first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stands unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. So, at once. At once. I can't remember the, the voice I gave him. What happened to the the, the the Shakespeare guy, the the other land roommate? I thought he would be important in this story, I guess not. Maybe he'll show up later. Yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knocked the candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon had it out though, and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to, to throw at him. Plenty of knives around the place. Can't say I, I noticed if one or two were missing, I'm afraid. If that bawling thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, you have a job perfect it, I think. Oh, shit. Hmm. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. I had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. Of course, a veteran such as myself. It's only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just Nat's whisker from death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? <laughs> well, I must say, I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a dead end. Fensix may well be right. Well, wh whatever the chances, we only had this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mrs. Nadahudo. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Very well, counsel. Begin your cross-examination. Well, I mean, you know, when in doubt, just press them. Press them like that button. Of the day you're referring to, yep, 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 press, 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 press. Mata! The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. 
Yeah, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garrett. Rather passed a note, in fact. When Mrs. Garrett found the note discovering her husband's little secret. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What a sordid state, state of affairs. But well, it's not him, right? Hell on earth. I say, what? When a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decency not to try it. <laughs> he remembers and he's like, shit, I hope she doesn't remember. <laughs> you bring it up, she's gonna smack him again or something. And besides, half of it was wide off the mark anyway. A likely story. These waters run very deep. <laughs> And what transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? The camera took over. All right, all right. Mata! And the fire also spread to some items of furniture, didn't it? The bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. Just so happens there was some bath water around anything, so I sloshed that about to put it out. A most precarious situation you put yourself in. I was in a three-story townhouse on the west side of the street, where the water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from a public water pump in the day if you need any, you see. The lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although, that little moustache Japanese man buys water bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Not Natsume. Yes, he receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours? He's obviously very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the man? <laughs> I believe he uses all his income to buy books. Well, anyway, the point is, I was able to douse the fire with water, fortunately enough. Well, pick up whatever I can find, throw it Okay, how do you know? How do you know you didn't show the knife? And even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time. It was more important to extinguish my anguish than the flames. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw. Wow. Don't throw things at your spouse, come on. It's most certainly not true, but it's time to take down Mr. Nettlehood. How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> so, uh, please cast your mind back and try to remember. There was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day. In all honesty, I don't recall. But I feel I must point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, towel, a sponge. No, a napkin. Ooh, napokin? You don't like that, sir? Got something to say about the napkin? Uh, do you have something to add, sir? <laughs> Mr. Garrett, uh... Uh, uh, don't, don't, don't shoot. Uh, sorry, I, I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remarks just now bring something to mind? Uh, nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles the whole thing launched in my direction. But somewhat more solid than she lies. Books, bricks, and the fire pockets, I seem to recall. Ouch. And the woman's aim is uncanny. She led a directive of every bolly. Oh, ah! <laughs> She's pouring in his pipe. Good grief, woman. We're not at home now. This is court of law. Oh, dearie me. Ever so sorry, dear. What's she even doing with teapot in here? Yeah. Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you. Obviously. Well, take a look at this thing. How do you suppose that happened? Hmm? Oh, your pipe. Your pipe, sir? I had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of a soft projectiles she did. Yes. And when I went to pick the thing up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see you sponge through that sort of damage. You see, your pipe was broken. It would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. Huh. You are one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Hmm. I wonder what we should make of this account. Could be important. <laughs> Did the defense believe Mr. Garrett's remark just now to be of great significance? Oh no. This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes, as well as hearts, may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed. Common sense, one might say. Might one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Hmm. Well, I, I, I don't see why not. 
Oh, cheery me. There you go again, trying to ingratiate yourself with a young lady. Very well. The court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. Pipe is an added. Ooh. Could the tip of the knife be in the pipe or something? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's have a look. Ah, there it is. There it freaking is. Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe there. Yeah, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What, what's this? It's a tiny fragment of metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. Tip of a blade. Surely it couldn't be. We know what it is. Okay, well, I got that piece. That's all that matters. All right. Happens you got turned, Miss Nanoma. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned down. Oh, oh no, it's fine. Thanks to Sasato-san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. Well, thank you for that. Rebuttal, Mr. Canada. Now we can return to the crux of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? I'm just gonna skip it, because... I think I already found the evidence I need, so let's just skip and see. That's the extent of the testimony, isn't it? What, what do you think, Ms. Nanodo? Well, I think we've heard all this before, to be honest. I can't say I'm particularly confident that we'll be able to prove anything new from this testimony, but this cross-examination is absolutely essential. And we established how this knight came to be at the scene of the incident. Yeah, I know. Give it a chance, give it a chance. I'm sure both of them must be feeling very worried. Worried that it was in fact a knife belonged to one of them that caused the victim's injury. If we could find even a tiny shred of evidence to support that theory, it would clinch this trial for us. It would explain everything. Yeah, it would. So for Seki-san's sake, we must. We must find that last crucial piece of evidence. Ah, I'll prove it. This. Mr. Garadab, could I ask you to take a good look at this, at this please? Y you, you can ask, but I can't see a ball like thing. Uh, you can't? He used to call me Dead Eye Dead back in the regiment, of course. But that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. Wear glasses, man. Oh, he does. Dear me, it's rather wearing being asked about every other lesson, every other word. You must... <laughs> you must be very dizzy. <laughs> what is that? A tiny scrap of metal? Yeah, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is, in fact, a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadup's pipe. My, my pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, counsel? Are you suggesting that it is in some way related to the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? Yes, it is. I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record. I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. Hmm, you appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, counsel. Very well then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence when paired with this fragment of metal allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case? Back knife. This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece of at the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victim's bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip had suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. <laughs> No, that's not the case. The tip of this particular nice blade is 
the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadup's pipe. Huh. Ah. <laughs> oh, he's so dramatic. Good grief, good grief. Not bad, Zeke. I, I don't believe it. The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good, good golly gosh. Order, order, order. Is, is this some sort of eastern sorcery? This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? So Van Zeeks has figured it out, has he? Counsel, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Oh, judge, you dim boy. Uh, y yes, my lord. The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Gerdo's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. I had this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did. Yeah, it would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Oh boy, the shaking. Oh, dear B. During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garrett had flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garadup, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadup's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Ah. In short, this knife which fell from the window of the Gerdup's house is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Oh gosh, oh dear. Oh. No! <laughs> oh, she's on a little, little box. I didn't notice. She's begging down to pick up the book. Come on. That's, that's how she got in the back. He's gonna ask, like, how did she get stabbed in the back then? A full body theory, I'll give you that. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry. But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle, I fear, is quart. Because you see, who <laughs> get spoiled by an insurmountable inconsistency? Uh, an insurmountable. What? <laughs> what? No, fancy. Explain yourself. What is this inconsistency you have claimed? You claim to have identified an inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with the knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her. Ah. I tried, you silly little man. Uh, now, now, Joe, I don't think. What are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above, there's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. Yeah! Ah, oh, Naruhodo, you're dim as well. Order? Order? Quite right, you see, that's exactly right. If the knife had fallen on her from above, it would have struck her on the top of her head. Well, um... Oh god, even I know this. Come on. This is for words, look. I knew it. I never liked this deal in the first place. Uh, I don't know, though. What really did happen? Hmm, it would appear the defense has made a rather a spectacular blunder. She bent down. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is history. Come on, you know this, you know this. We're so close. I can see the truth. I'm so sure we're on the right track. But now the way has been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency. Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Mr. Sato! 
You mustn't worry, Mrs. Naruhodo. You were just caught off guard, that's all. And your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A tacit acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. Hey! <laughs> this inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test! Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her, her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Counsel? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. Goodness! That's a, that's a madness. Surely this must be the last time. Counsel, present the evidence of which you speak. This is the last inconsistency, the final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how falling that keeping a large effect back is... It's either the book or the picture. I'm gonna go to the book. It's the book. Perfect. This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The third book? Is that not Mr. Garedam's book? Yes. And to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question. And the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so, as part of his wholesale transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true. However, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? Oh, well, sir. That's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she su suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have been doing much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? By, by Jingo. I, I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh, dear me. We, we know that the book fell from the top floor of the Garadab household onto the pavement below, at precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment, the young woman was walking along the street in a light fog, when all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. <laughs> the book I true. Yes, Mrs. Garadab, and what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I, I, I really can't imagine it, but I suppose she might have reached down and pick, picked the book up. Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, oh heavens! And when the woman reached out and picked the follow book up, what position would her back have been in? That's right. Facing this guy completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman still bent over picking up the book, Shannon, oh, unlucky. The next object fell from the room above, the jackknife straight into the middle of her back. And at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Miss Green was the defendant, Mr. Suseki Nantz. Well, I never. It appeared to Miss Anatsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Oh. And 
from the other direction. The constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there would never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. That is the real truth behind this case. You could say it was a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> Freak out! Are they gonna freak out? Because, you know, you got them. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Caridap, freak out. They're gonna freak out. Come on. The very first time you showed me that knife, I, I had my suspicions. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. There they all been. Poor Mrs. Caridap. Of course, I'd never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but... It was all my fault, wasn't it? I think take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. John, dear. Uh, it's alright, I know. I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry! Oh, she dropped the teapot. Oh, she fainted! <laughs> oh, cute. <laughs> oh. Stop the gear for falling. Oh. <laughs> cute. Well, figured it out eventually. It took, it took longer than I expected, honestly. Lord Van Zeeks, what news of Mrs. Gerda? She's been taken to an infirmary. It appears that today's events has left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There's no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could have easily been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There's some good news, however, my lord. She's awake. I just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition's improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange. We've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. How wonderful! The woman's out of danger, it seems. Yeah, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume? Uh, um, yeah, yes! On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture. And have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. Say sorry, Van Zeeks. Do it! <laughs> you... No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Miss, Miss Natsume. <laughs> that evening when, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in, in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I, I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she'd been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now. But I still can't get used to life here. I... I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits here lurking in the fog. <laughs> like they're haunting me. Poor Saseki sign His imagination really has got the better of him. Yeah, poor man. So when it happened, I, I, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have gone for help! For a doctor! For the police! Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I'm truly sorry. Hey, Mr. Garrett on the jury now. One could indeed say that same, some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exorcised. I heartily commend you both. Oh. You didn't do shit, Van Zeeks. 
Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Ah, uh, yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I did suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Uh, sitting in for the old bee while she's out of action, you know. But I know what her decision would be. This mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work. Well, it's about time. I say, I have a quirk of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman. Music! 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 <laughs> Did they say Yuzai? Yuzai? So Yuzai is guilty. Very well, Mr. Soseki Natsume, I hereby pronounce you not guilty. Yay! Why is there fireworks in here? <laughs> Jesus. This is a court of law. Hello? And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, oh, yes, yes, Lord, sir. You are now a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh, oh yes sir, of course. On my life, I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm transported to tears. <laughs> Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned. Yay, we did it. Story 4 is done. On the on the story 5. Honestly, I didn't think it'd take this long because I thought once we finish like interrogating, no, sorry, cross-examining the officer, it would be like just like ten minutes or something. But no, it took like almost an hour just to finish that off. Oh, welcome. Wait, you you mean me? Of course. Is there another locum here? Is there even one? Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, Mr. Nadahoda Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased, Mr. Natsumi's delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that then? Look, you did it! You sent me for the brink! Uh, well, what, what happened to the hormones is in no way your fault after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely, loyal, welcome, foyer! Um, yes? I mean, as I said before, I've just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down at me, laughing. Look at that little hunchback. Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, isn't that to me? But, today, you welcome warrior gave my, gave my gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all this babbling British. You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed. Behold, the best barrister ever born! Well, that, 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 that's very flattering. I'm very, very pleased for you. This is giving me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. An, an, an anecdote? Is that what's to become of all my hard work? Ah, there you are, my dear fellows. Oh, apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Sholmes, what a pleasure to see you. I see I'm here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to see. Oh. The trial shall begin present, present, presently, Mr. Naruto. I wish you the very best of luck. It's just fi finished. What? No, then my haste was in vain. Ugh, it's, it's... Ooh, Herlock Sholmes! Oh, have you met, sir? <laughs> um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either the deep lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. 
This is all your fault, Herlock Sholmes. You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I, I'm going to give you peace of my mind. My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I placed you down. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Oh. <laughs> go goody. <laughs> Had she been taken to the hospital more urgently? I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, guilt. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. You're a bit human, after all. <laughs> Anyone would have been shaken by such an experience. <laughs> it's like, sorry. <laughs> I, I do feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind. Now then, what was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Nothing. <laughs> Priceless! Oh, I'm sorry. Really, but... That was quite priceless. Ah, oh, poor Soseki-san. Still, on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And, it would seem, you were not even found guilty. But there's no bright side. Yes, there is. You're free. Whatever you mean, Miss Natsume. Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and... No, by the Reaper! Ah, Lord Fancies. I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! It... It'll be alright, Miss Natsube. Hmm? If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, I'll protect you. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Perfect, perfectly executed Sasato takedown. Uh, I just like like being turned on my head. A bit of warning might be nice next time, Mrs. Sato. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting experiences to your friends back in Japan. Oh, that's why he keeps looking behind his back for the spirits. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh. It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I've visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here and the city it has shaped. And I've come to realize that it is my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, isn't that to me? Or, in perhaps less veiled, veiled terms, you wish to withdraw halfway around the world. To escape the terrible Reaper's curse. That's not it at all! The more I learn of literature, the more this strange feeling claws in my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen a work of my own. Oh, I see. A work of literature by suseki san Could be an interesting read. Ah. I just want to remind people again that's why Suseki is actually a real person. He is actually a novelist. Um, you can look him up for more details. I'm not entirely sure of the worst that he's done, but yeah, have a look. Interesting that they've inculcated someone uh, real in the game. And what about Miss Susato and yourself, Miss Naruhodo? Uh, sorry, what about us? Will you return to Japan alongside your mustache compa compatriot? Wait, wh why, why would we? A week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. Only now does it feel as though we have finally found our feet. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another 10 nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you, you could take my lodgings. Oh, the windowless room. Oh, but, but what it lacks in windows. It more than makes up for the floor, a ceiling, and walls. Great. <laughs> Great. And of course, I'd be happy to leave behind a cursed evil spirit. Oh my, an evil spirit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's, it's, it's an infallible wake up call. Oh god damn, no way. <laughs> we'll think about it. If that's alright. Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking logic with me? <gasps> we get to stay in 221B Baker Street? Well, a vacancy is conveniently presented itself. Though it is up in the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of? 
Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to invite taking taking lodgings in a great detective's office's attic. <laughs> I, I'm too overcome for words. So suggesting we look elsewhere is out there. Then it's settled. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. And you must come too, Miss Natsume. I insist. I, 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 I don't know what to say, but, but thank you, and, and yes. Wonderful, then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Miss Natsume. It shan't take long. Somebody's happy. Lokum, I, I knew that you would let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Miss Natsume. It's been a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're gonna have to say goodbye so soon. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But look, we'll meet again one day. Yep, I'm sure. Hopefully by then I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, yeah, Mr. Schultz. I have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. And so, with Suseki san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Sholmes to what was to become our new home, 221B Baker Street. Yay! Oh wow. Oh, 4 4 1 p.m. I feel like I should continue this, but I don't know how long it's going to take. So I think I'll leave this episode here. We will continue the next episode checking out our room properly, and then we'll proceed to episode 5, which I think it's the actually the Hounds of Baskerville, which I, I feel is one of the more well-known, um, um, I would say, like stories about Sherlock Holmes. If you haven't read it, it's, it's, it's actually a very interesting read. There are different variations of it as well. It's on Sherlock, the Benedict Cumberbatch version. Um, I'm not sure if it's in the other variations. I do know... Actually, I'm not sure. There's a show called Elementary. I'm not sure if it's in there as well. But yeah, you know what? We'll find out more in the next episode. So, if you like what you see and you like what you hear, be sure to like, subscribe, and get that bell on so you stay up to date on all my latest videos. As always, be safe, take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Peace!